Hello. Okay, uh, this video is going to be five really special science fiction novels, five novels that absolutely blew me away, and uh, I really wanted to talk about them and rave about them. If you don't know the books, absolutely recommend you read them. Um, if you do know the books, then obviously you could write a comment about whether or not you liked them or not, or what you liked about them. Um, but uh, they're quite different, um, and uh, they're all relatively new. Um, I want to do another one about classic books as well. Um, and one on underrated books as well. These are quite highly rated, um, but uh, I thought it would be nice to group them together because all these five books really did knock me for six. Okay, so here we go. Five science fiction books. First one I want to talk about is Touch by Claire North. Absolutely phenomenal book. Claire North is a pseudonym for Cat Webber. Uh, she writes under three different names. As far as I know, um, she writes differently according to what the name is. Uh, I haven't read any of the other authors' names uh, and other authors' books. But Claire North, I've now read three of her books and I'm a massive fan. Um, this one in particular, uh, lots of people talk about Harry August, which I do want to talk about in another video, but this one is, is my favourite out of the three I've read. Uh, absolutely phenomenal. The pace of it is incredible. Uh, literally in the first couple of pages, that's it. You're, it's taken off on a on a, a really fast-paced storyline, um, but it's quite a, a really interesting and unique kind of take on a concept that she's come up with, where um, Kepler is a an entity, a being that can um, transport itself into other bodies and take over their lives for a particular amount of time. So sometimes a very short amount of time literally seconds sometimes uh, lots of chase scenes where she's doing it where Kepler I keep saying she um, there's no real gender to the being really um, where he or she is uh, going through bodies and seconds to get out of a difficult situation or months or years in some situations so um, it's, it's absolutely um, gripping really really exciting book um, but it's also really thought-provoking because uh, every time um, Kepler belongs in a body for a while, um, then the, obviously relationships form, and it's all you know. Yet again, in, in a lot of great books, it's about the meaning of life. What does what what matters in your life? You know, what makes a life important? What bits would you want to hang on to? What bits would you like to let go of? What makes you human? Um, and it's you know, it's a very emotive, powerful book from that point of view, but it's very fast paced. One of the interesting things about the book is the way that because Kepler is always traveling through different bodies, um, it kind of dehumanizes the, the people that um, are um, hosts to Kepler uh, in the time that they are hosts, even though sometimes it's a deal they make and sometimes it's just Kepler just uses them to get out of a situation. But, but there's a deal made um, with uh, one of the main host called Josephine which is where a lot of the plot is built around um, because Kepler is going into lots of different types of bodies, going into old bodies, going into bodies that have got illnesses um, there's a very sort of central text um, that kind of really develops that um, sense of what changes in our bodies when we get old or when we get ill and, and sometimes Kepler spots bad eyesight before the actual host realises they've got bad eyesight and that kind of thing so there's lots of there's lots of depth to it. So it's not just this sort of action chase kind of business. There's there's all sorts of layers to it. Um, so yeah, I couldn't recommend this enough. It was such a fantastic book, and uh, I mean, it ends really well. Um, and you know, all these different elements that that are built up through these different flashbacks all become relevant um, by the end. So yeah, Claire North Touch, my favourite book I've read so far of hers, um, but. She's just a fantastic writer. There we go. So, Matt Haig, The Humans. Um, this is one of those books that has been given a lot of praise, a lot of attention, but I wanted to include it in this because I do think it's justified. I think it, it really is a very powerful, emotive book. Um, it, it creates um, a situation for an alien who is... Um, inhabiting a body a scientist um in and, and kind of that that is like the um uh conceit 
that creates this really powerful and real study of what it is to be human and what it's like to have a long-term marriage, what it's like to be a parent, um, and the pressures of work, all sorts of things that are developed in this. Uh, and it's written so well. You know, you, it starts off very funny. Um, and there, there are lots of funny moments through the book, but it's definitely one of those books that starts funny and then gets sort of more serious before, before the end. So the general plot is that uh, uh, this particular scientist has come up with a um, scientific discovery that would change um, the development of technology on Earth. And these aliens have been watching us and they figure out that we're not ready for it, um, that we would misuse it and it would be bad for us and bad for the galaxy, blah, blah, blah. So um, they decide to, to put an alien to replace this scientist, uh, replace his body so that the alien can make sure that discovery doesn't happen and to make sure it will go smoothly in the future. So uh, Andrew Martin has been ha inhabited by this alien and through that, um, it, the alien starts off quite cynical and negative about humans and through the interactions with his wife um, it's, a, it's, a, it's become a bit of a um, loveless marriage in some way so kind of very quickly the alien discovers that and it just um, develops from there really and, and the alien learns a lot about humanity and humans and the way that we in our interpersonal relationships and the way we interact with each other and um, it, it's it's Matt Haig's way of uh, discussing and and analysing that side of our lives. It's a really fantastic book that really will warm your heart, but it also kind of it's very thought provoking and make you think about what really matters in life. A lot of these books do that, I think. Well, certainly uh, three of them, um, three out of five. Uh, but yeah, this this book is a really really beautiful book. The Humans, Matt Haig. Yeah, so I watch quite a lot of booktubers, and, and which is why I know these books have come up a lot on other people's um, pages, but I wanted to do my own sort of list as well. So um, there are some similarities with some other booktubers, but this is a book I discovered through um, booktube, and I've investigated and had a read of it in the back of the back of the book at the bookshop and thought this looks really cool. And uh, it really is a fantastic book. V.E. Schwab's Vicious. So again, this is another author like Glenn Orff who writes in different ways with different names. Um, so she does write um, uh, young adult books under the name Victoria Schwab, but when it's V. Schwab, apparently it's more adult. So anyway, this is the only book I've read by. I've got her uh, the sequel to this to read. So Vicious is a very clever side swipe, if you like, on the superhero or more importantly supervillain uh, trope in fantasy fiction. Um, so the book starts with these two scientists who have discovered um, the uh, secret to creating superpowers and basically through lots of flashbacks um, as well as it kind of runs in two different timelines um, so through flashbacks and this sort of current uh, rivalry you see them building up towards this big clash at the end uh, with a few other characters that are really cool that kind of uh, become part of their story along the way and uh, it's it's one of those books that, that none of the characters are particularly likeable the situation is fascinating and gripping um, and and because the the trope is likeable and because we're so familiar with that idea of superpowers I think that's what keeps you going even though the characters aren't nice at all they're not likeable um, so although saying that there is a um, a character called Sydney, who's actually a little bit likeable, and she kind of comes off the best in the book. But the two main characters are definitely not likeable. Um, but that's the point, really. They're both potential supervillains, and they're both nasty, and they're both uh, resentful, they're both um, uh, vengeful, they're both uh, got this sort of negative uh, core at their personalities. But it's a really thrilling book. It's very. Uh, really well written it's very fast it's very developed so you, you do get a sense of who these people are and these the way that the two timelines work really well because the the previous timeline the older timeline informs the newer one and it's and and you kind of learn more about them as it goes along and it's uh yeah really well written so that's V.E. Schwab 
vicious. Okay, so Andy Weir. Uh, lots of people know Andy Weir from The Martian, and obviously, um, well, I haven't read the book, I've seen the film, but The Martian's been uh, been praised pretty much non-stop uh, since it came out, and uh, this is a book that he followed it up with, which has not been as widely covered, but I absolutely loved it. I bought it because of, the like in the film The Martian, I haven't read The Martian, the book yet, but I bought this because of the um, the film The Martian. And uh, I really, really loved it. It's very funny. Uh, again, it's it's got a lot of pace, although it's very technical. So Andy Weir is known for doing lots of research. So when he wrote um, The Martian, he did a lot of research into what would ha how you would get out of that situation. And likewise, with the setup for this, he did lots of research on the moon, which is where it's set, and the different kind of issues that, you, that they'd have there. So... Basically, most of the story is about this uh, main character, Jazz, who's a smuggler, and the setting is the moon, um, and Artemis is the first city on the moon. So that's the, the sort of general idea is uh, we're colonising the moon. The, there is a city there, the first ever city, Artemis, and Jazz lives there, amongst lots of other businesses and uh, criminals and all sorts of different people in this city called Artemis. She smuggles contraband um, back and forth the moon and uh, she's kind of getting by um, on her coattails but she gets offered a really big job, a big heist and she wants to go for it and, and, and ultimately the story is that heist. Like I said, the technical detail makes you kind of really feel like you're in um, the moment, you're there on the moon um, living through this with her. It's first person so um, the narrative voice is her and she's very funny and she's very cocky uh, she's very empowered you know she, she's very likeable very very likeable and I think that's a lot of the charm of the book is her voice um, so I think he's written that really well um, and you know as you would expect there's lots of set pieces where it gets a little bit dangerous and and uh, a little bit hectic for her um, and you know, you want to keep reading it. All of these five books I've, I'm covering, uh, I couldn't put them down. I read them so quickly because they were so brilliant. I can't wait to read them again. Um, and that's definitely the case here. I, I, I was just grinning all the way through it because it's such a great sort of uh, fast-paced and interesting read. Artemis, Andy Weir, great book. Last but not least is a book that I just keep thinking about. It's absolutely blown me away. Dark Matter by Blake Crouch. So uh, he's um, known, for, well, he was known for a series of books. Um, uh, started off with Pines and then two other books that went with it, which are kind of detective books. Um, and he's done screenwriting and that kind of thing. But this is uh, a book that it would probably be better if I didn't tell you what the uh, idea of the book is really, because the less you know about the, the book, the more you'll enjoy it. So it starts off with this guy, Jason, who's got a lovely home life with his wife and his son, and uh, everything is going smoothly. And he's got a very successful career as a scientist, and he's very uh, respected in the scientific world. And uh, basically he gets kidnapped, and he doesn't know where it, what's, what's happening. It goes off on a huge tangent that just gets developed so well and um, it, it's kind of, the book sets itself up to potentially get too complicated but Blake Crouch handles it so well and uh, it leads to a finale that makes absolute sense right up to the last few pages of thinking, how's he going to get out of this? And uh, it's just, it's brilliantly written the ending. But the whole thing is, and it really makes you think about your reality, what matters in your life, um, your relationships with your family and your other half. Um, he's clinging to his the love of his wife through the whole book while his reality is shifting. Um, I'm not going to tell you why, but uh, it is about reality changing and what you want to grab onto and what matters to you in your reality and what... Um, what you would fight for uh, and what 
someone else might fight for as well. Um, it's it's an absolutely a phenomenal book. It's also about regret. So some of the what he covered, because it's because the book touches on what's important. It also touches on what you think was important that you regret, um, and um, the, the the narrative conceit gives some of the characters a chance to explore that regret. Um, so, um, you know, it does make you, when you're reading it, you are thinking about your own regrets and your own successes and your own sense of who you are and how you've built up your family. Or, um, you know, I, do, I, th I actually do think that if you're a parent or you've had a long-term relationship, I think you would probably get more out of this book than, say, a teenager who hasn't experienced some of this stuff. I do think that's true. Um, but uh, regardless of that, it's so well written, it's so gripping, and um, it's so uh, the characterization is very real. Um, you do believe the characters, you do believe him, he is written in a way that um, you do care for him. So, Dark Matter, couldn't, I could not recommend this enough. Um, I think, whereas with humans, that seems to have crossed over into uh, lots of people who don't read science fiction, love that book. I would still recommend this for people who don't necessarily read science fiction because it's it's a sort of conceit, narrative conceit that I think people would be happy to suspend their disbelief for, and it's not particularly technical scientifically. So I do think that could cross over a bit anyway. But regardless of that, absolutely amazing. Um, Blake Crouch, Dark Matter. So that's five books, um, science fiction novels that absolutely blew me away. Um, couldn't recommend him enough. Um, there's lots of other things I want to look at, so I'm going to do a time travel one soon. Um, different people have covered time travel in different ways. Um, and some classic ones, some like author profiles I want to do. But for now, go and buy those five books, or read them, or get them from the library, or borrow them. Great science fiction novels. <laughs>